So in all sports sense, we'll be going over our next final prediction of this offseason, and it will be over the Clemson Tigers. And this is a team that was 14-1 in the 2019 season. They made it all the way to the national championship. And of course, yeah, it's quite a season for Clemson. It looked like they were going to win the championship for quite a while. And of course, with having Trevor Lawrence, this team looked really good last season, but LSU was the only team in their way. Uh, but nonetheless, we're going to be going over 2020, whether or not Clemson can make it back and win once again another national championship. We're also going to be going over your returning production along with a full preview and prediction on every game on Clemson's schedule heading into the 2020 season. With that, let's look at your season trends from 2019 for this team. They were undefeated throughout the entire season. They came into that national championship game 14-0. And of course, when you're in as easy of a conference as Clemson is in the ACC, I mean, that was kind of expected. But yeah, once again, their only loss was in their final game of the season in the national championship. They're, otherwise, they were 14-0. But yeah, some of your key wins last season, there were lots of them for Clemson last year. They blew out basically every opponent in their regular season. And they beat up Texas A&M 24-10, good win there. They also beat Louisville on the road 45-10. They also beat up Wake Forest 52-3. And let me remind you, for a good chunk of last season, Wake Forest was a ranked team. So that was a very good win there for Clemson. And they also absolutely blew out Virginia in the ACC Championship 62-17. to So, and I'm sure, I mean, Clemson probably could have scored 80 points in that game if they really wanted to. I mean, they kind of slowed up towards the end, but still, I mean, yeah, Clemson really, I mean, they could have they could have put up a lot more points if they really wanted to. They just kind of slowed down towards the end. But yeah, then they were able to get a good win, a great win, actually, against Ohio State 29-23. to And many people expected Ohio State to actually knock off Clemson in that game. And so that was quite a win for Clemson there to be able to beat off Ohio State, which Ohio State's a team that I think... Uh, definitely is a national contender going into next season as well. And, you know, Ohio State and Clemson have had quite a history, too, in the college football playoff. I mean, they've met each other several times. And uh, for the most part, Clemson's always won. But, yeah, still, I mean, it's been uh, it's been quite a history between both of those teams. As far as the returning production goes, you return your star quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, of course. I mean, he's expected to be uh, the best quarterback in the nation next season right now. And, of course, that's what he's – I mean, he was expected to be the best quarterback last season – until Joe Burrow came out of nowhere and had an outstanding season. And Trevor Lawrence is expected to be possibly the number one overall pick in the NFL draft in 2021, and rightfully so. I mean, he's already won a national championship, and he led his team to a second one last season. So, I mean, if you look back at last season for him, he's, he put up some pretty good stats, 3,600 yards with 36 touchdowns and eight interceptions. So, it was nothing really in comparison to Joe Burrow, but still, I mean, he put up some great stats last season. 66% completion rate, too, so that was very impressive as well. Now, but nonetheless, yeah, for Trevor Lawrence, considering he's going to have more experience heading into 2020, that's going to help him a ton. And I think Trevor Lawrence next season could definitely live up uh, to Joe Burrow and what he did last season for sure. They also returned their starting running back, Travis Etienne, which that's going to be a huge return for this team. I mean, he's a very underrated running back. No one really ever talks about him, which really surprises me. But he's going to be a big running back, definitely one of the best in the nation next year. As he had last season over 2,000 yards of rushing yards. Actually, he had 1,600 rushing yards, but 400 receiving yards. So he had 2,000 total offensive yards with 23 touchdowns with that. So, yeah, he was an outstanding running back last season. And I think many people, when they look at Clemson, they always talk about Trevor Lawrence, and rightfully so. But you can't forget about Trev or Travis Etienne as well. I mean, he's going to be a great running back next season for sure. You could expect 2,400 yards out of him, I think, next season. They also returned their second running back in Lynn J. Dixon. And, of course, last season he had 756 yards with six touchdowns, so he was able to put up some pretty good stats as well. And the big thing is about Trevor Lawrence in comparison to Joe Burrow is that Joe Burrow is not as much of a rushing quarterback. However, Trevor Lawrence definitely is. Trevor Lawrence is a big dual-threat quarterback. As last season, I mean, if you look at his rushing yards, he had 563 rushing yards with nine additional touchdowns. So if you add that to his stats, he had over 4,000 total yards last season, uh, 4,200 to be exact. So, yeah, Trevor Lawrence, can't forget about him. But, yeah, they do lose their top receiver in T. Higgins. That's definitely going to be the biggest loss for this team next season. Um, T. Higgins went pretty early on in the NFL draft, so um, you can't forget about him. But he had 1,200 yards last season with 14 touchdowns. And then they also lose their second receiver from last season, Justin Ross. He had an injury, or it's something with his spine, I think, and that's going to cause him to miss the entire 2020 season. So, yeah, that's definitely a big concern for me. And, I mean, kind of looking, I mean, in my schedule preview for this team, they did have Justin Ross still playing. And so it was looking really good in the receiving core. I mean, you're, you're returning your second and third receivers. However, now for Clemson, this does concern me a bit for Trevor Lawrence. I mean, you're losing three of your top four receivers with T. Higgins, Justin Ross, and also you can't forget about your fourth receiver and DeAndre Overton. Um, so yeah, with that, I mean, you do return your third receiver and Amari Rodgers. 
which that's going to be really good for this team. Of course, Amari Rodgers last season, he didn't have near as big of an impact in comparison to the other couple receivers, but he had 470 yards with five touchdowns last season. So it's good you're, it's good you're at least returning him. But once again, if you go back to Justin Ross, that's going to be a huge loss uh, going into next season. And it's really tough that it had to happen that way for him. As he had 865 yards and eight touchdowns last season, he was really on the rise. And I think, I mean, he could have been bound for a great season, a huge breakout season in 2020 if he was able to be healthy. But it's just kind of is how it is. I mean, there's nothing that we can really do about it at this point. But yeah, as far as receiving core looks, that's definitely going to be the weak spot, I think, for this team for Clemson next season. Once again, I mean, you got a great recruiting class coming in. So that's going to be good. I'm sure you'll get a couple of good receivers out of that. But then again, I mean, you're still losing two very experienced receivers with T. Higgins and Justin Ross going into next season. I'm sure, I mean, Trevor Lawrence, on the other hand, I'm sure he's going to be able to make something happen. He's as good of a quarterback as pretty much anyone in college football right now, and he, if not the best. I mean, he's definitely going to be I mean, a great quarterback, and he's definitely got the skill to pretty much do anything out of nothing, I'm sure. So, I mean, especially with Amari Rodgers, I think he'll be just fine, but it does concern me a little bit at the start. As far as the offensive line goes, you lose three on there, so that's going to be kind of a tough spot as well as the offensive line. However, your defense looks very good going into next season. You return your entire defensive line. You only lose two linebackers and two in the secondary. So you do lose four starters on the defense, but that's kind of right around average. Most, most teams lose three to four on the defense. Yeah, so for Clemson, they're pretty much average around there. But brings up the question, chances for another national championship run in the 2020 season. I think Clemson is bound for it. I think even though this receiving core is looking kind of uncertain, the good thing is for Clemson, they've got probably the best quarterback in the nation going into next season with Trevor Lawrence. So, I mean, I think they'll be just fine there. But once again, I mean, it's just tough to say right now. We're still pretty early on and injuries can still happen. But either way for Clemson, I still think, I mean, if they didn't have Trevor Lawrence, I'd be a bit concerned for this team. But the good thing is for Trevor Lawrence is he's got Travis Etienne in the backfield you cannot forget about him i mean he's gonna have a big season as well so that's going to be really good for this offense to be able to have travis Etienne back i mean if they didn't have a running back core either i would be very concerned for clemson but this running back core is looking pretty good so uh yeah overall for clemson i definitely think this is a good looking team heading into 2020 and i think chances for a championship run are quite high for this team especially since they're in the acc if you're talking about them possibly being in the sec i think clemson definitely would have a tougher chance of making it to the college football playoff but when you're in as easy of a conference as the ACC is right now, I think Clemson's definitely got a good chance to make a run for it. As far as your schedule looks, you start off the season on September 3rd against Georgia Tech on the road. So you got a road game to kick off the season. However, then you got Louisville, Akron, and Virginia all at home in three straight weeks. Then you got Boston College on the road, followed by Florida State. Then you got NC State and Syracuse at home to finish off your October. Then in November, you got your toughest game of the season at Notre Dame. Watch out for that one. And then you got the Citadel on the 14th, followed by Wake Forest on the road, and then South Carolina to finish off the season as always. So here's what I'm expecting out of your September. I think you run through your September very easily. I think Georgia Tech, I mean, they were terrible last season, and I think next season, I mean, they could improve definitely, but I, I, I mean, that's not even going to be a bowl team next season, so I think Clemson runs over them. I also think they run over Louisville. That's That could be a close one. That could be a dangerous one. Who knows? But I think with it being the first home game of the season, everyone's going to be super fired up, so... Um, that's going to be a tough environment to play in for Louisville. And I think Clemson gets the win there easily. I also think they blow out Akron. And then they, then I think they get an easy win over Virginia as well. I mean, Virginia is losing Bryce Perkins, their quarterback. And overall, that Virginia team is not looking as good as they were last season. So I think Clemson runs through their first four games, all blowouts in my opinion. And in your October, I expect pretty much the same. I think Boston College, that could be maybe a tricky game, but I think you get a win there. I think that Florida State game, that one could be a bit of a tricky one as well. But I think Clemson, in the end, uh, gets a win by over 14 points. And then I also think you beat NC State and Syracuse. And so, yeah, you go through your October and you're 8-0, pretty much blowing out every opponent at this point. Once again, this ACC is just not looking very good next season. I mean, Florida State could be better, but in the end, I mean, they're not going to be a 9-10 win team next season. So I expect it to be pretty easy. And Virginia, kind of the same with them. I think if any team in these first eight games would give Clemson trouble, well, it'd probably be Florida State because that's on the road. But if you're talking about a team in general, I'd have to say Louisville. I mean, Louisville's a team that I definitely think next season has potential to get a 9-10 win, te win season out of that team. I think that they definitely have got a chance to put up some really big numbers next season. Uh, so yeah, watch out for Louisville, but I still think with it being at home, I think Clemson gets the win. But if it was on the road, I'd probably have to give you a tough win in that one. 
As far as your November looks, though, it's that big Notre Dame game. You can't forget about that one. Notre Dame next season. I mean, they're losing a ton of talent. I think they've got the worst returning production in the nation going into next season. I mean, they're losing so much talent all around. But the good thing is they are returning Ian Book. If the Notre Dame team did not have Ian Book next season, I'd say Notre Dame would be a six-win team. But the good thing is that they do have Ian Book. So I think that they definitely could be an eight, nine-win team possibly next season. So I think that team is not going to be near as good as Clemson is. Um, but I think that they definitely will give Clemson a fight considering it's going to be in a tough location at home at Notre Dame. So I think that's going to be a close one, but I think Clemson gets the win in the end. However, I think you run through your last three games with the Citadel, Wake Forest, and South Carolina. And I think you finish off the season 12-0. and So, I mean, most people are expecting a 12-0 and season out of Clemson, and I'm kind of expecting the same. I mean, once again, if Clemson was in, the say, the SEC, I think this would be like a 10-2 type of team in the SEC but as far as the ACC goes uh yeah this team definitely should blow right through their schedule and who knows I mean there could be a game that could trip them up I mean if there's gonna be any game on the schedule that would do that I'd probably say Florida State on the road primarily because one you're playing Boston College on the road the week before so this is your second road game in a row and two Florida State I think is a team next season that could be a potential six to seven win team so um, yeah, Florida State, definitely, I don't expect big things out of them, but I think that there, there could be a chance of a possible upset there. I mean, Notre Dame, once again, you can't forget about that one as well. But, yeah, and the other, let, me know, let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Clemson. Let me know whether you think this team will go undefeated or not. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that. But in the end, that about wraps up our preview on Clemson. If you enjoyed this, be sure to slap a like on it and subscribe as well. It really helps out the channel. And I'd really appreciate that. Because, as always, thanks again for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. And I'll see you all later.